Hello and welcome to the second video in this series of videos showing how to restore a Triumph GT6 Mark II. In this video I will be showing you how to repair this common problem with the windscreen frame on a Triumph GT6 Mark I and II and various other Triumph sports cars. I'll start by removing the paint to expose the spot welds. I can now centre pop the spot welds and drill them out with a 732nd or a 5.5mm drill bit. Once this is done, I can bend over the rain channel to expose the corner of the metal below where I need to do my next cut. Then cut it through this corner here to remove it from the windscreen frame. Take note here, when grinding this corner to a perfectly straight line, hold the grinding disc as flat as possible on the metal. Don't hold the grinder on an angle or you won't get a nice straight edge which is very important. I now have the opportunity to clean all the rust out of the inside of the frame. After it's all been cleaned out, I can now fit a new piece. This piece is a straightforward angle piece made from 1.2mm galvanised steel. It will be fully welded along this joint. As you can see, I'm doing that right now. After this, I can turn the frame over and plug weld through the holes I drilled to remove the old corroded material. Moving on to the next repair section, I am now centre popping the spot welds in order to drill them out to remove this corner of the frame. It is important to drill through the spot weld smack bang in the middle. That way, when you come to separate the two pieces of metal, it would be much easier, as I'll show you now. See, no hammer or chisel required. There's a lot of rust in here, which will need to be cleaned out before I repair this corner. This area here looks really dodgy. Now 
Yes, just as I suspected, lots of heavy corrosion in this area. After repairing this side of the frame, I will have to cut out the other side and repair it later. It wouldn't be a good idea to cut this out before repairing this side. I need to keep the corner intact so as the repairs on this side will be the correct shape. Next, this repair piece here for the bottom of the frame needs to be fitted first. You can form this between two pieces of angle iron in a vise. If you have lots of money and can afford a decent sheet metal bender, you can form it on that. The next part is a tricky bit too. I'll have to use the shrinker stretcher tool to form the correct double curvature to get it to fit correctly. Just a little bit more shrinking to do, then trim it to suit and it will be ready to fit. Now I've made a cardboard template so I can take the exact position of the hole for the weld nut on the right hand side so as to transfer it to the left hand side. Then I can weld a quarter inch UNF nut over the hole before enclosing it completely. Before enclosing the frame, I think it's a good idea to try the frame back on the car to ensure the hole and the nut are in the correct location. That looks fine to me. Now it's time to make the enclosing pieces and fit them to the frame. This old piece from the corner of the frame was originally in two pieces. You can see the brazed joint here in the middle. That will make it easier for me to make the repair pieces. Now I've cut a blank for the first piece. I just need to put shallow bends in it for about 20 degrees or so. After that, I just need to put a shallow bend diagonally across this corner to make the transition around the bend to meet the next piece. Now I can clamp it in place. That looks a decent fit. I can make the next piece now. Two inches here, one inch here, 45 degree bend here to start with. Now I can form it to go around the corner using the shrink stretcher tool. Now I need to form the wide end over a piece of round bar to make the transition from square to round. Then trim it to size and that should do for me. Now I can fit and weld these two pieces into place. When tack welding anything into place, try not to tack it in the holes for the plug welding because if it's wrong, it would be much more difficult to remove it again. Besides, the plug welds need to be done in one go without stopping and starting.
Next, I can make the front piece from this blank here. First, I need to put a joggle bend in it, and here's how to do it if you don't have a sheet metal folding machine. Put your first bend in at about 45 degrees, then place it on your bench hard up to a 1 8 of an inch thick piece of material, and clamp it down as shown here. Then just hammer it down over the 1 8 of an inch thick material. Next I need to get it to match the double curvature of the frame by using the shrinker stretcher tool as you can see here. That will do for me. If I'm going to do this side, I may as well do the other. And now I can fit them. First clamp it into position, then scribe around it as shown. That looks fine, just a small gap here. I'll soon take care of that. When tack welding into position, first tack only where it is flush. Then use your hammer or a screwdriver to get the rest flush as you can see here. It needs to be as flush as possible. That way you won't be needing a bucket full of body filler afterwards. When doing the plug welds you should clamp it as tight as you can and as close to each plug weld as possible. Try to not leave any gaps, that will make it much easier to weld in one go without stopping and starting. A plug weld doesn't weld properly at all if you stop and start. If you can't manage to do your plug welds in one go without stopping and starting, you will need to drill bigger holes to plug weld into. In a standard punch for doing plug welds, the holes are quite small and they will fill up in no time before you even get any weld penetration into the steel below. If you drill slightly larger holes, this will allow you to stop and start and still get penetration. After welding, grind it flush, then finish off with a 36 grit sanding disc. If you're happy with that, you can then go over it again with an, a 120 grit disc for a nice smooth finish. If you're not too happy with it, leave it with a 36 grit finish. That will make a good key for the body filler. Now I can fit the final piece into the frame. This piece is known as the rain channel. It's just a straightforward piece of 90 degree angle formed from a piece of 1.2mm galvanised steel. It's plug welded through the prepared holes, as shown here. As there are two pieces of galvanised steel, there is no need to paint between them with weld through primary. Now I'll just fully weld each end and put some seam sealer down this joint later.
Next, I need to drill a three quarter inch hole in each bottom corner to shoot some wax oil into. The holes can be blanked off later with rubber grommets. In my next video on this GT6, I'll be replacing the boot floor and doing repairs in the boot area. I'll see you then. If you would like to see this Vitesse being fully restored with lots of detail from this to this, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel.